Last night, we got five new episodes of Craig of the Creek, completing season four and leaving us with a mystery of who this mysterious Red Hood may be, though I personally think it is Maya and she is working for Xavier. My name is Creek Cut, hit that subscribe button and let's dive into it. Now, we'll be diving into the Bernard arc as well, but the finale itself was a self-contained episode involving Craig and the gang trying to get yet another piece to the puzzle cube. Omar was explaining this to Maya, who had been missing from the creek since they last played dodgeball together, with Maya claiming she finally made it onto a baseball team. Omar wants Maya to be his friend and join their little hunt for puzzle cues, but she can't join because she says she has baseball practice. Instead, someone gives Kelsey a tip that the cube is in a strange dark room hidden in the creek, alongside many glow-in-the-dark stars embedded into the walls. They can only glow after absorbing some light, however, and the episode becomes about trying to make a machine that can supercharge the lights long enough for Craig to find the cube. Mysteriously, the machine is unplugged, and just after finding the cube, a mysterious red-hooded figure emerges to try and steal the cube for themselves. Now, when it comes to who is actually after the cubes, the only other person is former King Xavier, who had spied on Craig and his friends as they searched for the cubes, and wants the power for himself, as he believes it will reinstate him as King of the Creek. Xavier, however, is not seen as particularly talented, so even if he had this information on the cube, it wouldn't be very useful for him. Instead, I believe he hired Maya to hunt for the cubes for him, paying him the way he did before, with snacks and gifts, but the real motivation being that if Xavier is reinstated as king, Maya will have a purpose again and a position of authority. She made good strides with Omar when they played dodgeball and wanted to come back to hang out, but since then she has disappeared. Maya, I imagine, had been searching this place already. Kelsey was told by an 8th grader that Kenneth spent a lot of time here as a kid, and that is something I imagine Xavier would have known as well, and passed that on to Maya to do his dirty work for him. Like the Creek kids at first, however, she would struggle to find it with the flashing lights only lasting so long. When Craig and his friends came along, she'd wait patiently for them to find the cube and come in to steal it at the last moment as this Red Hood. The Red Hooded figure is not just more athletic than Xavier, but has a similar style to their athletics as Maya, as we saw at the beginning of the episode with her flips and jumps. This sort of regression, I imagine, is rooted in Maya's struggle to grow beyond the creek, which is an extremely important theme in Season 4, and will carry over to Season 5 with it being so attached to the puzzle cube that King Kenneth left behind. In the beginning, Maya claimed she made it onto the baseball team to explain her absence, and like with most good lies, it is probably based on some truth. I don't think Maya made it onto the baseball team, but instead tried again to make it onto the team and absolutely failed. This would have been her escape from the creek, a real reason to stop coming, something she wanted to do long before Xavier. While baseball is a passion of hers as a whole, it represents, like most extracurriculars, the opportunity to grow, to have order and structure, and be more adult as opposed to the wild chaos of the kids in the creek. Maya even expresses that she likes baseball because everyone knows what team you are on and is happy to play by those rules, indicating she's nervous about secretly being on Xavier's team and the others being unaware. When she took the job to find the cube, she likely didn't know that Craig and Omar were already after it. She likely got the idea of the red hooded figure from the green ponchos like Omar, as it has been used to hide identities. Leading up to this episode were three segments about Bernard and his struggle to be more adult. Bernard is preparing for college and even takes Craig with him to check out the local university. Craig of course hates the idea because he believes in enjoying the creek as much as he can, as it represents fun and freedom. But while there, he sees that King Kenneth hasn't been changed by college, but rather he's smart enough to know how to make college an enjoyable experience for himself, and that Craig can too. Bernard, on the other hand, had a major regression, becoming terrified about the high standards of college and thinking he can't handle it. This leads him to start playing at the creek again, particularly picking up his Yu-Gi-Oh ripoff that he played as a child. After getting dumped by his girlfriend, he gets taken in by Mark, the former leader of the Elders of the Creek, who has no elders to lead now that his sidekicks have gotten jobs and moved to more serious things. High schoolers who play at the creek are considered untouchable socially. It's okay for the witches to pass through or hang out for a bit, but to go there for fun and games in the way that the elders did was strictly taboo, as it inevitably leads to interaction with the kids, with the elders even holding events that the kids were invited to. Mark thus takes in Bernard, seeing him as someone he can turn into a new sidekick, another person to avoid the responsibilities of growing up with, and instead spend as much time as possible just hanging out, having fun, and eating snacks. This is what Craig thinks of as the most important things, but he understands there is something sinister about what Mark is doing. 
Mark isn't just refusing to grow up, but has probably not had the opportunities to be more adult in his life. Perhaps there are extracurriculars he could commit to, but nothing he has the same passion for that Maya has for her baseball. The Creek is a great place, and Craig can even enjoy it a great deal on his own, but at the end of the day, he understands that it's his friends that make the Creek what it is. His biggest fear when talking to Kenneth at the college is that he will become one of those people who never wants to leave the Creek, and that his friends will go on to do bigger and better things without him, or even that if they all did stay the same childlike way, they would not want to be with him regardless. With the recent episode involving the witches telling the stump trio their futures, Craig is confronted with the possibility that they all simply grow apart, and to him, the creek itself would seem meaningless without them. Mark thus has no real emotional connection to the creek, but rather it's just the place he can hide away from all the adults and people his own age, to act however he wants, no matter how silly. We've seen that he doesn't really care about how much his friends enjoy the things that they do for fun, but rather his enjoyment comes from his particular role in it, such as being a dungeon master, something that he just can't do on his own as he needs people to play out the stories he writes. One thing that the Snacks, Friends, and Good Times also doesn't cover is the very real desire to improve yourself. Right now, Craig gets a sense of this from his adventures, but as he finishes exploring the whole creek and there are no more mysteries left, he's going to find it to just be a children's playground that he knows too well. The world itself and the problems he faces in it will be his new creek and the place he goes to get his adventures. Bernard's sense to do better is represented by his girlfriend, as what she loves about him is his drive to study, move forward, and work towards a future. Without her, he loses what little motivation he has left and commits to being some sort of creek kid cosplayer playing Yu-Gi-Oh all day. It's when she returns that Bernard suddenly wises up and wants to be an adult again, with her also having the understanding that sometimes you need a break from the hard work. But in the end, he recognizes the creek for what it is, a nice place to be a kid, but not a place you should be spending all of your time. Maya, on the other hand, has perhaps lost her motivation after the opportunity to play baseball was dangled in front of her face and taken away yet again, so unlike Bernard, she will continue to regress. Bernard's three-part arc about trying to grow but falling backwards into being a kid in a costume was really to prepare us for this red-hooded figure, to recognize that it too would be a kid in a costume who had faced the possibility of growing up and either failed or got scared and thus began to regress. This concludes Season 4, with only one more season left, but the trailers for these episodes said that it will be a Craig of the Creek summer, if I'm not mistaken, so Season 5 may start airing over the next few months. If they're dropping episodes 5 at a time like this, it could be the end of Craig of the Creek before summer ends, but what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time.